Hey there everybody, my name is Jason, otherwise known as Jason Plays Pokemon. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys the top 5 glitches in Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Leaf Green. After quite a few nights of researching and playing through Fire Red again to get this gameplay for you guys, I finally completed this video and I'm here to share it with you, the internet. If you're new to the channel, we do all kinds of different types of videos, power saves, tutorials, let's plays, want to trade Tuesday, top 5s, and of course much more. Um, if any of that stuff does interest you, make sure to go check it out by subscribing to the channel and see what you like. As a fair disclaimer, this game, due to its vast similarity to Ruby and Sapphire, being that they were both made on the same engine, uh, this game does have a lot of its older glitches that were in Ruby and Sapphire fixed in this version of it. Uh, so out of the 10 or so total glitches that I actually know of within Fire and Leaf Green, these are only the top five in my opinion. So without any further ado, let's get into it. To kick off this top five, let's begin with a pretty infamous glitch that I know of. This one requires the use of a game shark or an action replay code that allows you to walk through walls. And this is one of those glitches that is done with the use of hacking, but in my opinion, it's still pretty funny. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna have the walk, up, walk through walls code on and navigate your way through to the Elite Four in the same path that I'm going in in this video. Go ahead and start up a battle with Lorelei. And you'll notice that when you start, you'll have no Pokemon and you'll send out a missing note. This is due to the game not yet activating the Professor Oak event in the very beginning of the game, which unlocks the ability to obtain your first Pokemon. And because you have not yet obtained a Pokemon in slot one, you have, but you've initiated a battle. You have basically sent out a missing note to be put in place of the Pokemon that should be in slot one. Because this fight is meant to happen after you've already completed the eight gyms and most likely have more than two Pokemon. The game is tricked into thinking that something should be in slot 1 when it actually isn't, there's nothing there, but this isn't it. Once you get knocked out by Lorelei, you'll get automatically sent to the Pokemon Center counter, but when Nurse Joy puts your balls on the healing table, something strange and a little unusual happens. This glitch causes a good chunk of your screen to get covered in Pokeballs, and then to top it all off, your game freezes right after. For this next glitch, you're going to need to find a way to import a Pokemon from Pokemon Emerald after using the Palm Egg glitch. If you're curious as to what the Palm Egg glitch is, I will leave a link to a article in the description where you can basically uh, read over and it'll summarize what it is essentially. After successfully importing a Pokemon that's been used for the Palm Egg glitch, you'll need to place the glitch Pokemon in your party in between two Pokemon, and then you'll want to start going back and forth switching between them on the summary screen, until eventually you'll make the glitch Pokemon to look something like this. This is pretty much Missing No's little brother. This is another glitch that can be done with the use of a cheating device to skip importing a Pokemon from Emerald and instead you can just spawn in a bunch of Pomeg Berries. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's still a cool glitch that I thought would be funny to include. Coming in at number three is the Poke Flute Mute glitch. All you need to do this glitch is to get into a battle and have your Pokemon fall asleep. Go into your bag and use the Pokey Flute, but make sure as soon as you hear the Pokey Flute music to hit L and R to open the menu. And then press it again to close it. You'll notice that as soon as you close it, the Pokey Flute music is completely muted and it stops going until your Pokemon wakes up. I think this honestly has something to do with the fact that when it comes to making inputs for a video game, there's usually some scenarios that game programmers never think about or are never bothered to go test out to see if there's a flaw with it, because the chances of it actually happening are so low that they just leave it in an area unchecked. And unfortunately, whoever was in charge of doing that clearly got rather unlucky with the event that he chose to skip. At number two, we have one that I just found out about while doing the research for this video. When you beat the after game event in Fire and Leaf Green, you'll be able to catch one of the legendary Johto dogs, which is Suicune, Raikou, and Enter. One of these will spawn depending on the starter you picked. Now in order to do this glitch, you need to have a Pokemon with either Arena Trap or Shadow Tag. This way the beast can't flee from it, uh, from battle on the first turn, so this also works with Raikou and Entei as I should mention because Suicune doesn't have Roar. Once the beast uses Roar to flee from the battle, you'll notice that there is no longer a way to find out the location of the legendary on the map, it'll just say unknown area. This is again one of those areas in the game where they more than likely forgot to change something in the script to allow the beast to attack and then respawn after fleeing with Roar, but again this is such a small chance of a situation to ever come up like this that they probably never thought about it. Uh, uh, this is almost considered a game breaking glitch in a sense, just on a much m smaller scale of course, because you essentially lose the opportunity to catch one of your respective legendary Pokemon unless you revert back to a save point that was used before it used Roar, and this can be a, a bit of a pain in the ass if you don't know about this glitch and 
prior to encountering the Pokemon, you could get kind of screwed over. This is literally what you should be saving your Master Ball for. And finally coming in at number one, we've got one of my personal favorite glitches in the Pokemon series, and this is something I've known about for years, and I've always thought that this is such a cool glitch, and it's the only one that I don't mind abusing, because it's not really too bad, I don't know, it's kind of fun to do, but this is the infinite nugget glitch. Essentially, after you fight your rival in Cerulean City for the first time, you can challenge the trainers in the Nugget Bridge, only to be confronted by a Team Rocket recruiter trying to bribe you to join, uh... Team Rocket by giving you a nugget and whatnot if you win, uh, and then if you win, he leaves you alone and so on and so on. However, if you manage to lose against this trainer, which can easily be taken advantage of by just catching a Caterpie or something weak at the beginning of the game and going to fight this guy with only that low level Pokemon in your party, if this guy lets you win the battle and you go back and try passing him again, he gives you another nugget and another one and another one and another one. This guy is literally a nugget dispensary because every single time you go back there, he will continue to give you another nugget. And this is only when you lose to him. And this is something that appears to be a really, really bad scripting error that once again, Game Freak decided not to look back on thoroughly enough. This glitch can be exploited to the point where you can have the maximum Poke Dollars, which is 99999, uh, in like literally less than an hour if you sell all the nuggets to a Pokemart. You're pretty much set at this point because now all you need is one more dollar and you can buy the bike from the bike shop. I'm sure there's someone out there who was definitely really disappointed when they found out they couldn't actually buy the bike. Anyways, this has been the top 5 glitches on Pokemon Fire and Leaf Cream. If you guys enjoy the video and want to see more top 5 glitches for other Pokemon games, I may consider making some if you guys show some support with a thumbs up on this video, as it is the greatest and easiest way to show your support on all my videos, so I would greatly appreciate it and that'll let me know the most if you guys want to see more videos like this. And if you guys make that happen, then I will make a new one come out as soon as possible. You can also check out the plethora of other top 5s and other similar videos on my channel. Uh, and that I've made in the past and if you like them, maybe you consider subscribing Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. My name is Jason and I'll catch you guys in the next time